Despite having more than 15 releases, the Ease franchise is definitely among the most overlooked action RPG series ever made. There are several reasons for this, but one of the most undeniable ones is the fact that several games in the franchise were never even localized or released in North America. One of these was Ease 4 Mask of the Sun, Nihon Falcom's follow-up to Ease 3 Wanders from Ease, a very unorthodox game in the series. Unlike its immediate predecessor, Ease 4 Mask of the Sun returned to the classic overhead style that defined the first two Ease games, and that decision significantly altered the course of how future Ease games would be made and played. And believe it or not, Ease 4 Mask of the Sun was actually one of two games to carry the Ease 4 name, the other being Dawn of Ease. But why was that the case? And how does Ease 4 compare to the other Ease games and action RPGs in general? I'll answer those questions in this video where I explore the good, the bad, and the ugly of Ease 4 Mask of the Sun. Before I get into all that though, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more retro gaming content. Remember how I said there were two Ease 4 games? Well, the reason for that is because series developer Nihon Falcom was going through tough times when this project was started, with many employees apparently leaving the company. So for the PC Engine version of the game, they licensed its development to Hudson Soft, who finished the game at the end of 1993. This version is called Ease 4 The Dawn of Ease, and it differs significantly from the Super Famicom version. For that one, Falcom licensed its ideas and script to Tonkin House, who released Ease 4 Mask of the Sun at virtually the same exact time. Believe it or not, there was even a version planned for the Sega Mega Drive, the Japanese version of the Sega Genesis, but this version was never completed. And it may just be a good thing that it wasn't, because otherwise we would be dealing with three different Ease 4 games instead of two, each with three separate developers. And this crazy numbering schizophrenia is already complicated enough as it is. Because I've spent most of my time playing the Super Famicom version, that's what this video will mostly pertain to. And speaking of that, there's a complete English translation for the game by Aeon Genesis, who does extremely polished translations, by the way. The script is actually very well written, and the font looks great, so you can pick it up in the description below, and it's easily playable today. Ease 4 Mask of the Sun takes place between the events of Ease 2 and Ease 3 Wanders from Ease, but you still play as a doll, and many of the locations will be familiar to you if you played those ones. It's a time when the land fell under the looming shadow of the Black Pearl. In this one, a doll is staring at the ocean's waves when he discovers a mysterious message in a bottle. With the help of a nearby poet, descendant of Ease, he's able to determine that it's actually a call for help from the faraway land of Celseta. And get this, it says aid is needed from a great hero. And yeah, if you hadn't guessed yet, you're that guy. So that's enough to inspire Adol to head to Celseta, so he sets off on a ship with his friend Flair. Unlike in the Dawn of Ease, in the Mask of the Sun version, the two leave on the ship at the very beginning of the game and there's no events in the town of Mania at all. Let's just say it takes some time before the two reach their destination, with some unspeakable horrors and, you know, the emergence of an evil villain getting in the way of all that. Now just like in the other Ease games, this one has you running into enemies to do damage instead of the side-scrolling approach that the previous title took. So as long as you push yourself into enemies and time your movements right, you will deal damage. But you'll actually take damage if enemies catch you off guard. It's a little hard to describe, but it really involves constant moving and good decision making. There are places where you'll be swarmed with tons of enemies at one time, and there are also bosses that use big attacks you'll have to avoid. So Mask of the Sun really puts emphasis on the action part of the genre. If you're used to other action RPGs from this era though, like Soul Blazer or Secret of Mana, this will come as a super weird style, and it will probably be really hard to get used to. But it's also something that makes Ease stand out, and I really appreciate that. You can also regenerate hit points automatically without using items, as long as you stand still and don't get hit during this process. And this streamlines things pretty well. 
The biggest innovation that Mask of the Sun adds to the E series is the fact that you can find and equip various swords which unlock new magic. There are five in total, and they allow you to hurl fireballs, shoot blocks of ice, and even heal. To use specific magic spells, you'll have to equip the weapons in question to unlock it, so you'll definitely have to do some toggling between them. It honestly felt a lot like item swapping in games like The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. And then there's the soundtrack. And even though the gameplay and story are both satisfying, this is probably my favorite aspect of the entire game. Because man, I can't say enough how good these melodies sound, because they're super catchy and really approach the quality of some of the best RPG soundtracks on the platform. Tonkin House cultivated a large team of six composers for this game, and it really shows because most games from this era featured scores by one or two composers at most. I think you'll really enjoy the vibe, and there's a great variety of uplifting, mysterious, and somber songs. And if the different versions thing wasn't confusing enough as it was, Taito actually developed a remake of the game on the PlayStation 2 in 2005. And that one is called Ease 4 Mask of the Sun A New Theory. That one incorporated a new isometric style and voice acting, but it was never officially localized in North America either. Overall, I say Ease 4 Mask of the Sun is well worth playing for action RPG fans, and I think it'll be one that's fun to explore for a lot of people since it never came out in North America in its original form. The characters and story are fun to follow because of the impressive translation patch, and the exploration and combat is pretty infectious. As I already said, the soundtrack is fantastic, and it's just a fun experience all around. In fact, the only two negatives I would point out are that the graphics aren't anything special at all, and I do have concerns about the game's length. It's certainly on the shorter end and can easily be beaten in under 10 hours, but I guess that fact actually kind of makes it hold up pretty well now. It's certainly not as polished as the Final Fantasy games or anything like that, but I really enjoy Ease 4 Mask of the Sun. So what did you think about the game though? How do you think Ease 4 Mask of the Sun compares to the rest of the Ease games? Let me know in a comment below. Please do three things, like this video, subscribe, and click the bell below for more retro gaming content. A big shout out goes to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members too because they are simply awesome. If you want early access to the videos I produce and other perks like they receive, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon patron or via the YouTube join feature.